<laughs> when there is no connection between body and mind, but you are working with a body, and I think with a certain direction and with a certain intent. So, okay. Well, okay. this so, is something that some people, uh, how they would say it, uh, but I don't say that I'm working with the body at all. And I don't say that I work on people at all. I work with people. And what I'm doing in my work is teaching. And not mental word teaching, but action, feeling, teaching. And by that process, people gain control. Let me, let me interrupt and say, why do people come to me? Because that makes a difference. Most, uh, almost everybody who comes to me for services in somatic education, which is what it's called, and I'll elaborate if I need to in a moment, they're in pain, physical pain. And most of them have been the medical route. They've been also to body workers, acupuncturists, uh, osteopaths, physical therapists, and have not gotten what they needed. And the reason being that all of those pro approaches are working as if they're working on a body, and the person is kind of passively receptive to all of that. Yeah. Okay. My work requires 50% participation from my clients, 50% from me, and what I'm doing is, in effect, pointing out instructions. Only the purpose of these instructions is to get them to do things and to notice what those things feel like as they do them. And by that means, they're creating memory impressions in themselves, of themselves, which are different from that, or those memory impressions that go along with their pain that they walk in the door with. Now, here's the thing about memory. Memory isn't just the memory of senses and sensations. It's also the memory of reactions and actions, mm -hmm. which are always patterns of movement and tension. Mm -hmm. So having given you that background foundation, the people who come to me are stuck in reaction to events that occurred back when that triggered <laughs> contraction action in themselves mm -hmm. so hard that they, those contraction actions hurt. So the memories are of their contractions, not of the actual event that no, produced it, that. Well, it's no, it, it's both. The actual event has left an impression in them as if it's still happening and they're still tightening up. And you see this in people who limp when they walk or one shoulder is down all the time or they have chronic pain from muscular contractions. These are all the signs of a residual memory from either injury or long-term stress, which Ken would call um, breakdowns at the different fulcra or tipping points of maturation. Yeah. It's like here it is in a, in a tipping point, you're growing, growing, and growing, you grow enough, and all of a sudden you've grown further beyond what is really needed by you and your attention comes free and it begins to tip and send you downhill into the next increment of growth. That's a tipping point or a fulcrum as Ken uses the term. But people I'm getting often confused. Have I'm getting confused. You were you were moving horizontally there, but you're actually well, I'm moving sorry. up and then down. Okay. okay. Gotcha. So when a person has a trauma, they have a distortion in their growth process, which exists as a memory in them, or many memories. And those memories have a grip that distorts the person's functioning along the lines of intelligence. So they become tongue-tied, they develop a stutter, they develop emotional restrictions and restraints from emotional trauma. And those are just examples of many ways that a person can develop a breakdown in some line of development. What happens is that that breakdown in memory is generally, at, at first it's vivid, but it fades out. You forget the incident and just have the residual effect. Uh, mm -hmm. And they don't know they've got it. And we call that shadow material. So I don't know why I have this pain in my back anymore. There is a shadow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very interesting. And uh, I feel a little bit reminded of what I did in Berlin 
it was called breath therapy where we um mittendorf i don't know if you know that it, it was is mittendorf yeah mittendorf mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah and it was not so elaborated in integral but it was the same thing we tried to do so slow movements to to find out how the movement feels and to 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 how to say to to break the the patterns to break the patterns which were there before no when put up the arm like this and you take everything with your uh, in it was very liberating i mean hearing it like you do it like you explain it now it's it's more complex 